Hey, hey, welcome everyone to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander, and today's topic is very simple. It's work less, earn more. I mean, working less hours and makes making more money sounds like the dream, doesn't it? But it doesn't have to be a dream. I used to think that it was a dream and still until I started making it happen, making it happen for myself. Your story does not end here. You have choices to make that will either keep you where you are or move you forward. And we're going to talk about that today. It's going to be brief, but it's going to be tough. So lean in, buckle in, and just just listen and absorb and ask yourself the questions. Just give yourself some time right now to think. We don't give ourselves enough time to think these days, to think, to ponder, to question. What do we want? What do we need? Where am I right now? What do I need physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, financially? We need to think about what we need more often. So this week's code word is work less, hashtag work less. And if to get in the Facebook group, it's mommyincome.com forward slash join us. That's where we talk everything e-commerce and Amazon. And if you have questions, whether you're a newbie or an advanced seller, we'd love to have you as a member of the group. And mommyincome.com slash join us. That will give you the code. You need to use the code word, of course, to get in. Otherwise, we think you're just spammers and we don't want you there. So join the Facebook group. Join the conversation. Join the community. We've been have this community for Oh my gosh, since 2014. And there's thousands of people, but not too many because some people don't want to jump through the hoops and use a code word and things like that. But if you're one of those, I would love to have you in the group to have the discussion about starting or finishing or moving on on Amazon and starting and growing your business there. So we'd love to have you as part of the Amazon Files Facebook group. Use your code word work less and that will be awesome. Now, quick question. Very quick question actually just a statement. Keep this number in your head throughout this entire episode. 168. Keep that in your head, okay? I have to share a story with you. Uh, My best friend's mom, I've known her for 30 years, met her when I was 12 in the seventh grade. And her mom was a single mom and she was very healthy and energetic and was a psychiatrist by trade. And she was a wonderful, amazing, kind woman. Always had positive energy. She was very healthy and energetic at 75 years old. And suddenly what seemed out of the clear blue sky, she started to become confused a little bit. And um, my bestie was concerned about what she was feeling and going through, took her to the doctor, many, many, many tests, because this had to be figured out. Her mom was very intelligent, very quick, very smart. And for her to be this confused, all of a sudden, seemed very off. And so she decided to, to do all the testing, all the different things. And what happened was they discovered after many, many tests that she has a very, very rare, uh, one in a million kind of rare um, disease that attacks the brain. And she was basically told she had weeks or months. It was kind of unpredictable, but it's very rapid degenerative um, disease. Now, for looking at on the outside, looking in at a very healthy individual with hardly any issues at all, very energetic exercise, all this stuff. It was so devastating and crushing. And she went to heaven yesterday. That's only been about 30 days. And the the point here is really not to make everyone sad or that's too bad. It really is that time is so precious and none of us are guaranteed to live to be 100 or 80 or to be healthy when we're living. And so time is very precious and fleeting. And recently, even uh, another Facebook friend had posted something that I actually screen grabbed and thought about for a long time and just digested it because it's so, so true. It says that time is precious and fleeting. Time is free, but it's priceless. You can't own it, but you can use it. You can't keep it but you can spend it. And once you've lost it, you can never get it back. You know, today's topic is working for working less and making more. But the idea here is that time, 
is the only resource that you cannot purchase. That you cannot earn more time. You can't create more time. You can't, you can use your time better, but that's really it. See, I used to think, to be honest, back in the day, I was really broke. We were broke. We were a broke family. We didn't have a lot. We, um, my husband was a carpenter and he, that's a great, great job when there's work to be done, but in recessions and in the winter and different things, it's just an ebb and flow kind of a thing. So it's a great, great profession, great experience, great, even financially. Um, but it's not your typical 40 hours every single day, year, month. There's lots of layoffs and um, instability. People jump from company to company. So you know, when we were first starting out as a family, um, we had to work around that. But I used to think that if we just had more money, that we it would solve our problems and we'd be happier. We'd be happier people because we wouldn't fight or argue about where to spend the money or who's spending too much or what to spend it on and agreeing on. I mean, have y'all had any of these discussions in your your homes or your relationships or whatever else? I mean, let's be real. They said that, that money is the number one reason for divorce in America. Um, lack thereof or, or not being congruent about it or arguing about um, where to spend it or how to spend it or if there's not enough of it or too much of it or who wants to invest where. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. 168. Just keep that number. I used to really think that money was the best that, that could solve all my problems. So I that's what I did. I worked really, really hard and started a business and started earning more money. Uh, because I just, I wasn't going to settle for where I was at the time. Nothing wrong with that. But earning the money, starting the business and, and going down the hustle there was also took up a lot more of my most important resource, which is time. Now, there's always, there's a time and a place and a season for every part of life. And when you're starting a business, let's be real. You're going to spend more time on that project. It's going to take up your time and hopefully it's full of passion and excitement and you can't wait to get to your business so that you can grow it and turn it into what you want. Have you defined what you want out of your business? It's a great question to ponder. See, and eventually that hard work paid off with the support I have in my family and taking on uh, my mom as a partner and all the things. Eventually, I got what I was hoping for. I got what I worked for. I got the pile of money that I was hoping to sit on one day. But the reality was, rather than sitting on the pile of money, I was laying on it, exhausted, because I worked my tail off to get it. And I was too tired to spend it. I was wasting. Not necessarily. I, I, I'm going to use that word very carefully. I was using up my most valuable resource to gain a lesser resource money. Spend, you know, I've ever heard of the term spending dollars making dimes. A lot of people in marketing, you know, that they come up with things like that, like the spending your dollars making dimes. You're putting all this money in and you're gaining back this tiny bit of dimes. Um, that's in the beginning. That's a lot of very true in, in business. Spending dollars making dimes, spending hours gaining minutes. Now, eventually that strategy really works and we'll get to that a little bit later. But I realized in those moments of working really hard for years, not for three months, six months, whatever, for years, digging, digging out of debt, digging out of foreclosure and debt that we got ourselves into. I mean, that's no one's fault but our own. And well, of course, circumstances happened when my husband got injured and, you know, we were just, we were a mess. Um, but after working really hard and earning a lot of money and building up the business, just so, so tired working 60, 70, 80 hours sometimes trying to fill the gaps and fill the holes and build that. And then I started looking around. I was looking around. There is a, a road really close to where I live. I live in Oakland County. Uh, that's Michigan, Oakland County, but it is the wealthiest county in Michigan. And that's not my choice. I was just born here. <laughs> um, but the looking around, there is a road here that's about a mile and a half or so. And they call it the billion dollar mile. And they say the, the houses are on this one street between one block and another are literally like billions of dollars of, of homes and very gorgeous, very upscale, whatever. I mean, it's not necessarily gated, but we drive by there all the time. And you know what we never see? Like, I mean, like, never. 
I've drove by there a million times. Never see any people. I don't see anyone outside. I don't see children playing in the yards. I don't see a lot. I see these big, beautiful yards and beautiful homes, but no people, not a barbecue in the backyard, not someone playing ball in the front. Like there's no people. And I started to think that's a beautiful house, a beautiful neighborhood, a gorgeous pool, all these different things. And I think, I wonder if they have time to enjoy all of the things that they built for themselves. Because obviously you have to work really hard to get somewhere like that. And these are wonderful, amazing things. But where are the people? Where are they spending time? Where's the family? Like, what are they doing with their time that they have these beautiful things? But what are they using? I just didn't see any people and it made me sad. I was like, oh my gosh, look at that beautiful deck. That's so amazing. And I visualized that full of people because we have a big family and we're always outside and we're always barbecuing and this and that and the other thing. And I thought that deck needs an entire family and kids playing ball or, you know, people just hanging out and enjoying drinks on a beautiful day in this patio. And instead there's just no one, there's silence. There's no people. And I just sit and wonder, are they still out there working 60, 70, 80 hours a week and they built this wonderful, beautiful, and they have stuff and things to show for it? But how do they feel? Are they happy? Are they lonely? Are they full and surrounded by families and they're living their lives to the fullest? And maybe they're in Tahiti and that's why they're not outside in their yards. But I just look at, I've, and, and this is not just one drive-by. This is a place where we have to pass by often. And I just feel like I never see any people. And that makes me sad. See, now that I have some money, I just realized that money is just a tool and a resources and a resource. Something to be used needs to be used in order to be effective. Decisions need to be made by it. But the biggest reality is there's just some, there's some things you can't buy even if you have a pile of money. You can't buy time. And we can talk about how you can buy some of your time back and we're going to get to that here in a minute. You can't officially buy time. <laughs> And you can't buy health, but there's something that you can do about both of them to make them work for you, to spend them better, to enhance them, to perform at your highest with your health and utilize your time the best way. Well, when I realized that I was sitting on a pile of money, but I was so exhausted and depleted and unfulfilled to be able to even spend some of that. I started looking at ways to earn income in less time, same income. I wasn't interested in, in increasing my income. I felt like I had got to a place where we were, we, we, you know, ate beans and rice for a really long time to try to pay off our debt and worked really hard to earn extra income to pay off debt and to kind of get us out of the foreclosure issues that we were in and all that kind of stuff. And that took a lot of discipline and some humble pie and just like making some sacrifices. Um, but then once we got to a comfortable place, I really started looking at like, oh, I, I don't want to or need to necessarily make more money. What I really want to do is have more time in my life because I do have a little bit of resources, which I didn't before, so which limited me on how I could pursue different hobbies and things like that. But the reality is I've realized over time, it's just what you, time is what you make it. I wanted to more time back. I figured out how to earn the money and it took a long time and a lot of hours. But then I was like, what do I do about this time situation? So I started first looking at, okay, how do I make what I'm doing faster so that I can get done with work and get to the rest of my life? The rest of my life is these beautiful, amazing humans that live in my house with me and the ones that I'm surrounded by and uh, different communities, my church community and the different communities and friends and family that we have. Those are the things that are important. And I wanted more time for that. So looking at ways to shave off hours, minutes, um, and to, to in order to earn more money in less time, you've got to... Um, look, look at ways to cut corners to, and I don't mean cut corners like, you know, doing things half-assed. I don't know any other way to say that, but like, you know, not stuff like that, but more of like, how can I shave minutes off of this process? I heard something the other day on Shark Tank, which I absolutely love. If someone will ask me, I don't really watch a lot of TV, um, but if somebody will like, um, what would be your go-to show if you're like flipping through channels or just like looking for something to watch? It would be a documentary on some interesting person uh, doing amazing things out there. 
or some sort of sports icon or what I just love people. I'm fascinated by people's processes and their their journeys to success and the different stuff. But the other thing is also Shark Tank. <laughs> I love Shark Tank. Now I know it's reality and I know some of it's scripted and all that stuff. Like, you know, we can talk about that for ages. Um, but the reality is I love the guts and the passion. And I also love the advice of the sharks. If you're leaning in and listening, these are brilliant people with free coaching. They're just not coaching you in your situation. But I lean into Shark Tank as if these sharks are talking to me. And the reality is that, that Mark Cuban said something the other day on Shark Tank. And I was like, that is brilliant. He was listening to a product called the Better Better, and it was this like sleeve that fits around your bed sheets so that you can tuck your sheets in without them coming up and lifting up a heavy mattress and sheets popping off and things. And these ladies invented this Better Better, and it, I would call it like a headband for your mattress. You just tuck your sheets in. You don't have to lift it up, all that kind of stuff. And Mark, right after their pitch, Mark Cuban says, Back in college or whenever it was, must have been college, I think he said. And he said, I realized that it took, you know, five to 10 minutes every single day to make a bed and tuck the sheets and all that stuff. And he said, he he calculated the math really quick. And he said, that's 10 minutes a day times this many days times this many hours and realized how many hours a, a year he was wasting and time on making a bed. And he vowed that day to never make his bed again. He said it just wasn't important. It was not a task that was important to him. And he was not going to waste five to 10 minutes every single day making his bed. He's like, ah, don't care. It's not you. It's not worth my time and dismissed it instantly. And I thought that was brilliant. Number one, I hate making the bed. To be honest, I just hate it. And I'm one of those untucked sheep persons. So I want to tuck my, it's cold here in Michigan. I wrap my feet around the blankets and I'm like tucked in like a little burrito. I don't like, you know, the, the, what I call the hospital sheets where my mom has to have everything really tight and tucked in all the way around the corners and like just creates the little pocket there. Um, so it was funny that he said that and he, he wasted the time. Now I don't make my bed because it's a waste of time. I don't make my bed because I just don't feel like it <laughs> because I don't care, but that's the reality. The reality is not necessarily judging your success based on how many hours you work, but how efficiently you work during those hours and choosing to let go of things that aren't important. A time suck. Who says, maybe it was your mama, but who said you have to make your bed? It's your house. You're grown. You don't have to make your bed if you don't want to, and you don't want to waste that five minutes. So what? I would rather sit and enjoy another leisurely cup of coffee than worry about making my bed. So Mark Cuban, I'm with you on that. So when we go back to to wasting time and thinking about time and make shaving time off of your life, can you shave 10 minutes here and 10 minutes there? Can you find six things in your day that you can do in 10 and less and, and shave off 10 minutes off of it? If you do something more efficiently, quickly, think about your processes. I think oftentimes we are stuck in a routine and we're just doing what works in the moment. We don't take the time to think about how we're spending our time and could we spend it more efficiently and why? Can I do this faster? Can I do this better, easier, more efficiently? Why? Because if you do that to six tasks each day, you bought an hour. Now, it didn't cost you anything, but you figured out how to give yourself an hour of your time and to calculate that, figure out how much your time is worth. And it's not necessarily a monetary value. You bring value just by showing up, by being yourself, by giving it your all. Because effort is the difference between making or breaking it. You can have natural talent, you can have money, you can have resources, but effort is what gets you results. The amount of effort you put in. And if you can put that effort in in less time and be very focused and very efficient at all of your processes, you're buying time for yourself. And you can calculate what that's worth if you want numbers, if you're like a logical, concrete person, just like Mark Cuban did the whole math on how many uh, minutes a year I waste on making my bed and then just dismisses that task as just not important, not a priority, don't care. I will climb into a messy bed every night if it saves me 10 minutes a day. That's brilliant. That's the reason he's a billionaire and I'm not. <laughs> 
even though I don't make my bed, I'm sure I waste 10 more minutes doing other things. But the, the, there's something to learn from that, that there's some places you can shave off time. And part of it is efficiency and routine processes. I'm not, I never was, I am now, I guess, I never really was a process person. I didn't think through all the tasks in order and, and in which ways, because my brain doesn't naturally work in that order. It just does things automatically. And so to think about it and shift to faster, easier ways, a routine, a system. I was terrible at it, but I really, really wanted my time back. And at the time, when I was trying to make this transition, I was doing retail arbitrage and retail arbitrage was sucking the life out of me and burning my most valuable resource, which is time. I'd have to go out hours and hours a day, um, sometimes three, four times a week and then come home and then bring it all inside. All of the goodies I bought from retail arbitrage uh, from my packed minivan to the house, unpacking it, organizing it, putting it away, then processing it through labeling, cleaning, bagging, and then shipping back out day after day after day. And yes, that's just another job, another another business, whatever else. And that's when I really started thinking, wow, this is profitable. Profitable is great. People can earn money doing lots of things. I mean, I hear that uh, people driving garbage trucks make really, really good money. It's not a desirable job, but if it's money you want, you can get it from anywhere. You can earn money doing pretty much anything. And it doesn't have to take a ton of brain power or physical whatever else it is. Like there are plenty of jobs out there. If you just need money, go get a job. But if you want to buy, the only thing you can't buy, which is your own time, being an entrepreneur is the best way to do that. Because then the money that you earn, you can create systems and processes for yourself that speed that up, give you more money and time, and then you're good to go. So make it, when I'm realizing how much time I was wasting earning this great living, um, I wanted to start making a transition. I wanted to buy my time back. I was ready to then trade the, the pile of money for a little bit more peace and freedom and things that I really love. Because as much as I love business, and I, I do, I'm like constantly have new ideas and creating businesses and creating businesses for people like you and, and using your ideas and strategies to help you grow. That's what I love to do. That's like what I want to do in my spare time, right? So, but I had to make that transition because as I was transitioning and doing some retail arbitrage and starting Mommy Income, I realized I loved Mommy Income and I wanted to teach and train and help people, but that was going to take more time. So I had to be more efficient with my business, my money-making profitable product business in order to have more time to spend on teaching and training and podcasting and all these things. Um, and so making that transition from retail arbitrage to wholesale and then the wholesale bundles is part of the system. I realized that chasing around all of the products in retail arbitrage just wasn't efficient. As much as it was profitable, it wasn't efficient. Even though we had a system and a process and we had, we mapped out all the different stores we were going to and we know exactly when and how and we had every, all the pieces of equipment, our process itself was refined, but that still didn't make it go any faster. And our choice was to either hire some more people to try to teach them and train them to hunt for things or figure out another way. And so we used the 80-20. 80% of our time and energy and efforts were still spent on retail arbitrage. But then the 20% was spent on, 20% of that time and money was spent on transitioning to wholesale. We got one account, we got one product, we got one product bundle. And we realized quickly that we needed to bundle in order to make money because straight up wholesale was not looking like it was profitable. And so over time, we went from 80-20 retail arbitrage wholesale to 70-30 to 50-50. And at that point, it was wholesale bundles versus arbitrage. And then it was straight up wholesale and wholesale bundles. And now it's just wholesale bundles. Because over time, we were committed to owning as much of our own time as possible. Now, the reality there is, too, that time freedom is truly what makes people wealthy, in my opinion. The richest people in the world are the people who can spend their time however they want to and have the resources to. So time and money is a great combination. But if you have control over how you spend your time, you should be the happiest person in the whole world. Because you don't have to chase. You have your time that you can spend. That is the most valuable resource 
unreplenishable, unpurchasable resource. Time goes by no matter what. 168. 168 hours per week. That's what that number is. And guess what? We all get the same set every single week. It starts over 168. I almost said 30. I'm like, no, don't take any more of my hours. 168 hours per week. Oprah. Elon Musk. Jeff Bezos. Michelle Obama. Mark Cuban. Barbara Cochran, all of these amazing people, some of the richest people in the world, dollar wise. They all get the same amount, 168. And if you listen to any of these people, which I do on a regular basis, because I love being inspired and motivated by people who have done the work, and that's what they will tell you. You'll do the work, do something you're passionate about, do something you're excited about every single day and be efficient. Because then you can do whatever you want. You can do whatever you want with your extra time. So that's the question. We all have the same amount of hours in the day. Me, you, Oprah, Elon, Mr. Bezos, all of us, same hours. What do you do with yours? How much of it is wasted? And ask yourself, what did I spend my time on today? And do I care about how I spent my time? Do I care that I scrolled social media for an hour and 45 minutes straight and I was just so involved in scrolling? I was numbed out. I was just looking for some way to like not think. And so like laughing at all these different things, videos, whatever it is. I've done it. We've all done it. But can we walk away from that and be like, this is how I want to spend my time? Yes. If you can say yes, then great. But it's like, why am I spending my time like this? Is this making me feel fulfilled and happy? And is this the best? It's not necessarily the best use of your time doesn't always mean you're making money with that time. It's a, it's a personal question that you have to ask yourself. How do I want to spend the time that I have? Not, not how my spouse wants me to spend it. Not how my children, although you have to take care of your children if you have them. <laughs> um, not how my children want me to spend it. How, not how my mother-in-law thinks I should spend it. How do you want to spend the most valuable resource that you have? Your time. What makes you the happiest? See, that's the reality. The happiest people in the world, they live. They live. They don't work themselves to death unless that's something they absolutely love, which some people do, but it also can be a mask. Are you fulfilled in your relationships? Are you fulfilled financially, spiritually, physically? Are you working on your health? Another thing for another episode we could talk about, something you cannot buy, your health. Are you spending any time taking care of the only vehicle you have to live in? your body. It's all about how we spend those hours. And if you're spending a lot of hours doing things that you don't love, take some of that 168 hours this week and figure out which hour or two you can dedicate to thinking about and creating new processes that save you time. Because wouldn't it be nice to get off work at, say, I don't know, two or three in the afternoon every day and then have from three to six, like most people are finishing up their workday and commuting, but to have three to three, three to six p.m. or some sort of timeline that you can do whatever you want, your hobbies. You can go take a nap. You can lounge by the pool. You can go for a hike. You can play cornhole like I do. (laughs) You can play a sport. You can do whatever. Visit your grandma. Visit your grandma, you guys. And your mom. Call your mom. Time is short. It's too short to be lonely and sad and miserable, even if you have money or even if you don't. The happiest people figure out how to spend their time doing what they love. What is it that you love? Now, here's the real question I have for you. Transitioning from retail arbitrage to wholesale and to wholesale bundled bought me 20 extra hours a week. I was working 40 to 60 on any given week when I was doing retail arbitrage. I had no choice. That was just what we had to do, the processes. And something that first freed up my time was a prep center. I took prep and shipping off my plate first because that was the biggest time suck of the entire 
thing. Even though we had a great process and assembly line and all that kind of stuff, it was two full days, eight to 10 hours of packaging, processing, and shipping. And sure, when we outsourced that, it cost us some money. But it bought back 20 hours for both me and my mother. Two 10-hour days now back in our pockets to use however we choose. Now, I use mine to do this, <laughs> to podcast and to, to create videos and to teach and train people because I want them to have what I have because I didn't have it before and I didn't have a, a roadmap. I didn't have a blueprint. I didn't have any of that. I had some help and support from some books and some really wise, great, amazing people that are still out there teaching, I think, but also figuring it out, FBA and, and wholesale bundles all on my own and figuring it out what's going to be best for me and then passing that on to you because that's something that I'm passionate about helping other people's lives change and be successful and have the freedom that I was able to, because that doesn't come free. There's always a sacrifice that we're going to make. But what would you do with your extra 20 hours? Anything you've been dreaming of lately? Would you learn something new, try another hobby, spend more time on the hobbies that you have? Would you clean and purge and organize and do all the undone projects in your house? <laughs> that obviously was personal, but yeah, you know, um, start another business, pursue other big, great, crazy ideas, spend more time outside. 168. No discrimination. Not on sex, not on gender, not on race, not eth and ethnicity, not any of those things, nothing, circumstances, diseases, any of this stuff. It does not matter. Time doesn't discriminate. That's all we get. And how would you like to have maybe 20 more hours a week that you can do whatever you want with, including starting another business and making more money with it, if that's what you want? That's what I did when I made the transition from retail arbitrage to wholesale and then from wholesale to bundles. I bought time if there's such a thing. And what I do with it, I used it to create mommy income. <laughs> but yeah, that's the reality. If you want to be one of the richest people in the world, buy your own time. It's about working smarter and more efficiently. So take the time. That's what I'm going to challenge you to do because like the average of those, there's just some averages, right? 168 hours a week minus your typical 40 hour work week. Let's just be real. Most people work 40 hours. And then there's the commute. Usually people commute um, about, uh, the average American commutes about 45 minutes one way to work. That's the average. So some people are commuting longer, some shorter. So that's another what, seven and a half hours. Then you've got average American sleep seven hours or less. That's another 49 hours. You spend about an hour a day prepping and eating meals. I mean, maybe some of us longer because I don't know, I like to eat more. <laughs> Um, seven hours a week getting ready, showering, things like that. And then, you know, showering, eating all the necessities equals you get about 57 hours of leisure time left. If you're the average American sleeping now, some people commute more, some people commute less, some people work more, some people work less, sleep less, eat more, whatever. The average person has between 50 and 60 hours a week of time that they that's not necessarily controlled by necessities. Working, whether it's your own job or something else, let's just call it a 40-hour work week. Um, and then that doesn't include driving kids here and there, different, you know, things. That's all extra leisure time that you can choose to use. So if you take all of those other obligations you might have just doing different things, if you go to church and you're, you know, that's part of your schedule, then that's less leisure time. And it's a choice you make, but that's that's the whole picture I'm trying to paint is 168 hours a week minus necessities, minus all of those things doesn't give you a whole lot to work with. The time is precious, but if we have it daily, what are we going to do? What are you going to do with yours? Do you want extra hours? How about just five extra hours? We're always talking about, oh, I need a whole nother day. You can get that by becoming more efficient. So I'm challenging you right now to put it on your calendar sometime in the next seven days for thinking, for thinking that you're going to sit down with a pen and paper or your iPad if you have to, which I challenge you to just get a piece of paper and pen because, you know, we're, we're always, you know, getting notifications that we're distracted by. So sit down and be like, what could I do faster, easier, and more efficient to buy myself an hour? And then what would I do with that hour? Think about it. What do you, if you had an extra hour every day, 
almost like someone gave you 25 hours instead of 24. Of course, we all know we only have 24. What do you want to do with it? Is there a book you've been wanting to read? Is there something else? Think about it. What do you want? What would you love to do with that time? And some of it might be short term and like, hey, I would love to purge my entire house and paint everything again because we've lived here almost 10 years and everything needs a coat of paint. That could be it. But I have not made the time for that because I don't have a lot of extra and that's not exactly what I would spend it on. But if I had five extra hours for the next 10 weeks, for sure, I'd be painting. So just think about it. Would you start another business? To earn a little bit more, become more efficient, hire someone to do something because hiring causes training and training is the reason why most people don't want to hire someone because they don't know what they're doing or they don't have the time. Make the time. Make it. Create it. Buy it back. I'd love to hear from you guys. I'd love to hear different ways, even a way that you can shave off 15 minutes off of every day. That's something you're buying for yourself. So I'd love to hear about you come into the Facebook group and tell us about what you're doing to shave time off of something. Comment below this video, leave a review, come in the Facebook group and tell us, email me. I would love to just hear about how you are going to take back your time and create the life that you really enjoy and love by being more efficient at the things that you have to do. So that's just some food for thought for today. Time is precious and we don't get another go round. So every day, figure out how to enjoy your life. And part of that is giving yourself some extra time. We are busy people. We have a lot on our schedules. That's just reality. Welcome to being American. <laughs> and for those of you guys aren't American, I'm sure you're just as busy as well. We have a very busy, fast-paced world that we live in. Own your time. Go take it back. Go buy it back. Y'all, I know you could be anywhere else listening to any other thing. I don't take that for granted. Thank you so much for listening to the Amazon Files podcast. See you same time, same place next week, y'all. Bye.